Hey, hello boys and girls. I'm very sorry for the infrequent uploads. I'm moving right now, so my schedule is a little bit more tight than I'd like. So this is going to be a short video. Let's take a look on how to add details to the building. Off screen, I did some changes. I added all these individual parts into new collections that mostly just contain uh, that one single object. And I've connected those outputs to our geometry nodes like I showed you at the end of the last tutorial. Um, you just didn't have to see me do this four times, I thought. I've also renamed a couple objects just to keep it clean. You should do the same and maybe you should even think about rearranging your notes and you know, you can take for example notes, select them, hit Control G and then, you know, kind of tap them to a group. Maybe you find a, a nice layout that makes it a little bit more visually appealing. <laughs> Before we start, I want to address a couple of things because there are a heap of nice, uh, very helpful comments and I encourage you to scroll down there and there are uh, people that have great tips how to make this node network more efficient or smaller or whatnot. I should really stress this is not the most efficient way we're doing it right now for the simple reason that I think sometimes the longer path is a little bit easier to understand. Um, so there are a lot of nodes here that you could maybe combine into one or that you can get rid of and by all means do so. I'm just doing that the way that I feel is the easiest to understand. My only goal is that you click off this video like a, a tiny bit smarter than when you started off, um, which sounds really condescending and I apologize for the way I phrased that. So now let's leave this all behind and come to the actual content right now, which is adding details. There are a couple ways to do it, you know, since I've put everything into collections now, it's extraordinarily easy to just get a little bit of variance. Let's take this straight wall here as an example, select it, I'm going to duplicate it, move it over a little bit so it's easier to work on it. And I could, you know, just look away for this unclean modeling approach. I could just create like a bigger window in the middle and now it should automatically add those random bits throughout the building which is a great quick way to approach it. But you know, you already knew how to do that. So let's see a new approach now. Uh, first of all, let's think where do we want to add the detail? In my case, I just want to have details where those windows in the middle are because potentially I want to exchange these corner floors with windows for something that has more of a border. I enjoy that. Maybe, maybe it's like a big pillar that's going on here and then I can't add the same window detail to this edge piece. So let's move this entire situation over because I want to have the world origin exposed and I'm going to grab myself any of these straight wall center pieces, hit Alt G to reset its positioning. Now with Shift C, I get my gizmo back at the origin and I can add, for example, a plane. And I want to model like a little awning, so speed modeling time. <laughs> So with this very basic and shitty model done, I'm going to hit M, put it into a new collection. I'm going to call this awning. <laughs> now distributing this awning model over this collection couldn't be easier. So first of all, we've already determined that we want those awnings to be where those center pieces are. So I'm going to get myself a new point separate node and I'm going to create a new mask, which I'm going to call awnings. And now I need to find the point instance node, which instances these center pieces. Let me quickly check out. This is straight wall. Yeah, this one is for the straight wall. So I'm simply going to get a duplicate of this point node work, plug it into my point separate node, which is going to mask out where I want to have the awnings. I'm going to duplicate this point instance node, put the geometry one into this geometry here and instead of our straight walls collection of course I want to have the awnings collection. And now if I put this into join geometry in here you can see that all the straight walls have an awning. Same thing again if I want to have like another type of awning I'm just duplicating it, moving it over and perhaps grabbing this middle section. Now it looks a bit messy but you know that's just sometimes how buildings are. All right, um, now I don't want an awning at every single window. So you know, at the beginning of part one, I did something when I wanted to explain attributes. I took this attribute randomize node, plugged it in front of the value that I want to randomize. You know, let me quickly type in awnings in here. And when I decreased this min value, I got this kind of random distribution, you know, which is precisely what we need. 
However, this is not a very visual way of doing this, right? Minus 0.8 as a min value culminates into about half of the windows having awnings. That's not a very good way to think about it. So let's type in zero again and get ourselves another node, which is the good old attribute compare node, which we've already seen earlier. I'm going to switch B to float because I'm going to compare my awnings to a float. And I'm going to write the result back into awnings. So at this point of the node chain, awnings is just a random value between zero and one for all of these window points. And now we say, take this random value between zero and one, compare it to this float and write the result, either a yes or a no, a greater than or a not greater than, back into this value awnings, which is our mask for the point separation. And now if I increase this value, from zero to one, all of the windows will have awnings. I hope awning is the right word, otherwise I sound ridiculous, right? All right, Google supports my claim. If it's wrong, it's wrong. <laughs> you know what would be even better if instead of a maximum of one, we would put in a maximum of 100. And now this value should function like a percentage, which is way better. So I'm going to duplicate this group input here, Shift D, and I'm going to select one of these free seeds we have left available here and plug it into value B. And with N, I'm going to get this panel, rename seed to awning percent symbol and say it's between zero and 100. And now we should have a very practical percentage slider that gives me between zero and 100% window awning detail thingy, you know? And in the first iteration of this random building project, I just put every single window detail that I could think of, AC units, balconies, awnings, and all that into the same collection and put it behind such a percentage slider. I really recommend you kind of categorize them into different groups. You know, just do what we did here, you know, duplicate this whole setup, change the values, rename the attributes and get yourself a random group for every category of detail. So, you know, you have an awning percentage, a C unit percentage, a balcony percentage that gives you way better control and a more satisfying result. Oh yes, and by the way, if this seed slider here has been enticing you the whole time and you actually want to seed the randomness, you can simply, for example, connect this seed value into an input and, you know, choose which windows have awnings on them just as well as you could create an input for the point instance seed and randomize the awning types using that. You know, the world is your oyster. Why ever people say that? I don't know. 